Okay, so let's see what comes through for today, Tuesday, July 2nd, 2024, of course, with the um, Chakra Wisdom Oracle. So basically, we'll see if there's work to do to open the chakras where they might be blocked. Yeah, or just learn what the cards mean. <laughs> Could be that. Okay. There we go. Uh-oh. Okay. Maybe in the morning someone will be a little gossipy. It's a human um, condition, a human uh, experience. And <laughs> with your seventh chakra open, you'll be able to trust the instincts. Now, gossip closes up the heart chakra and blocks it. So, uh, and if, here we are, red chakra there, uh, first chakra. So we've got the fourth, the seventh, and the first. Uh, so anyway, bottom line, if your heart is open and if you're clear, you will instinctually know which way to go and understand that this person is just they're they're judging someone else harshly and that's on them and you know it's it's a it's a human thing that happens all the time probably way too much and it's a defense around a deeper connection with the people that you're with you're trying to basically when people do this they're trying to put themselves in a superior position to someone else and but what's sad about it is that that person isn't there to defend themselves so there's a little bit of a spiritual law here when it comes to gossiping is that the gossiper is maligning someone who's not there and then there, there can be one or more people you know, colluding with, with the, the misalignment or the malignment, I should say. More, more like, a, you know, the darkness. So if you don't want to get sucked into the darkness, you really have to trust your instincts. And I love the artwork here with the full moon and the white wolf, you know, the path. Uh, or the trusty doggy, whichever, whichever it is, you know, trust your instincts. And... When your all your chakras are open, it's uh, you know clairsentience. So when that happens, you may get smells like a dog or a or a dog or a kitty or a a wolf, of course, would get. You you may just feel your heart closing, and 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 there's a little warning there. But and I love this. I love that these three cards came through this way because. The way to work with anything is to get really, really grounded and connected with the earth. The uh, renewal card brings through uh, the ability to make a new choice, basically, and open up to some new uh, way of living on earth, where you're much more open, much more in your heart. I love the green here uh, in, in her, on her robe. Uh, I love all the green. I mean, just that getting grounded, right? Everything here, even if we didn't have the word renewal, we would see that it's all about getting very grounded in your light, very grounded on earth where life keeps on growing, keeps coming through with something new. So this basically being... Uh, in this in this deck, I think it's if I remember correctly. I'm still waiting on the book to come. It, it might come in the mail today, but I if I remember correctly, this was the first um, card that that of the uh, first chakra. So, I I think that this is just all about starting over, starting again. So you trust your instincts, get really grounded, start over. And, and if this is you or someone else, you can, it's, it's so easy, you know, if you're with people that you love and people that love you, it's so easy to just say, oh gosh, I'm going into my gossipy place again and I don't want to do that. Please, let's just clear that out. Let that go. 
and if you know if you're with people that you trust they can they can call you out and then you go oh yeah dang it i'm doing it again bad girl you know stop and and just start anew i love the swirls here of the white light and the all the light emanating out of her head yeah so just know that you know when people do that when the gossiping comes it's it can some of it can be just a bit of um, an addiction that are not really an addiction. It's 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 worse than that. It's actually like a place where we can automatically go into what I call negative pleasure, but it's not really pleasure. You just don't know it because it's the way you connected with somebody in your family, like your mother or your father, or if they weren't around, it was a sister and there was, you know, maybe sibling rivalry, or maybe it's possible like you had a terrible mother and all the sisters, you know, all the kids uh, were always talking about mom and what she was doing. Because maybe if you went to dad, dad didn't know what to do because dad was just working all the time and dad blew it off and put the relationship problems on the kids growing up, right? Because there's a real need that we always have to remember those real needs are for connection. And, you know, we need love, safety, comfort, and connection. And then the older we get, there's that, well, actually as a baby, there's that need to be seen and heard and understood. Like if the baby cries and mom doesn't come, the baby feels like it's not, uh, there's no one there and no one understands me, no one will ever get me. And after a while, usually they just give up and you know fall silent and that is a terrible thing to go through when you're growing up because your creative self-expression comes from whether or not you had that real need to be seen heard and understood met if you had if you were met in that real need yep, that being seen heard and understood will turn into your creative self-expression and therein lies you know the renewal and working through all the other chakras. And you know something I've been forgetting to let you guys know when it comes to the the chakras, the the first, third, uh, and fifth chakras are structured, like the structured levels of reality. You, you could even say the seventh as well. So basically, except for it, that's the structure of the universe, which is just so open and so big. But when you think of your human body, the first chakra keeps you grounded, so there's structure there, right? Blood, bones, you know, connective tissue. But then again, the connective tissue is so connected to the second chakra as well. So second, fourth, sixth, um, mostly second and fourth. But anyway, the first, third, and fifth chakras, when they're structured in alignment, if as you are growing, you are always looking for the truth, and you're blowing past, you're blowing out, you're losing your old um, connections to the way it was in your childhood, because that was the home that was set up as the energetic container for you to grow up in by your parents. So once you're out and you're on your own and you're making your own home and you have your own container and all of that, then, you know, things come up and you have to go, oh, wait, is this my parents again? Or is this, is this me? Like, how do I get out of that, right? So you have to face yourself and then you have to let go of all of these different issues that you, you know, where you thought you had to do something in order to survive or to be seen or heard and understood or to have pleasure of some type. So there's positive pleasure, which is in the laws of abundance and, and and just very, very open and creative. And then there's negative pleasure, but it's not really pleasurable. It's just that old familiar place that you grew up in. It's that old container that you were sitting in growing up when you were little. And it's confusing. It's confusing. Hearts are closed. People are trying to control things. People are just off doing their own thing and leaving you to be of your own device and you're just a little one and it's like, you know, you have to attach in order to survive. But if what you're attaching to is someone that's either not there and you're attaching to like the TV or, you know, hopefully you maybe you got lost in a lot of good books, but 
most likely you would attach on to anybody else who was there, and that could have been a very, uh, a very young, emotionally young uh, sibling, or neighbor, or uh, child, you know, person in in your uh, neighborhood, that type of thing. Other children, so things can get really messed up, and some of the ways that people connect is to get in that gossipy place. And it's not, but it's not real pleasure. It's negative pleasure. And we have to work our way out of that, right? That's the way to, that's the way to go. Work out of the, work towards the positive pleasure. Which feels so much better, right? (laughs) Yeah. So we're always in that, you know, struggle between constructive and destructive attitudes. Like I was saying, I think it was yesterday. But there's probably a lot more I could say about these, but um, or with these cards. But the, I don't want the reading to get too long because it's just a little morning touch in. But feel free to let me know how you guys are doing, and what you get out of these cards. So, oh, I know what I forgot. I I was saying we have the unstructured, or we have the structured chakras and the unstructured chakras. So the structured are the first, <laughs> first, third, and fifth possibly the seventh, which would be the structure of the the, uh, universe. And then we also have uh, the unstructured levels of chakras, which are the the second, the fourth, and the sixth. And so they kind of merge between the other ones, and they try, they do their best to keep the other ones open, the structured ones open. But if we're not grounded, really grounded, first of all, Uh, then it makes it hard, you know, we we have to kind of find our way through the second chakra from the first up to the second, you know, the the lower belly. Then the third chakra is going to be totally full of of ideas and beliefs and and ways to, like, control life. And so we do kind of structure it. And then the fourth chakra, the heart chakra, we really have to do our best to keep it open and constantly ask yourself, like, wait, is this true? Because when we're working with unconscious and conscious attitudes, when we realize what we're doing actually is is magnetizing our own life experiences every day, every day based on our beliefs, uh, and we realize that our attitudes can be guiding our thoughts and our feelings, and then our willpower that that third chakra comes in when you're when you're constantly evolving you have to just keep asking yourself like is this true like is what she's saying true and trust your instincts get grounded again take some deep breaths let go and just keep we're always like questioning our unconscious subconscious and unconscious (laughs) but we do have a wise unconscious so that's where we can trust our instincts but if your instinct, instinctual uh, path is to re- just to ground, you'll, you'll continue to, to renew. So yeah, so there's that. And there's a lot more you can say about that. But there's, that's why I uh, took that picture or brought out that book yesterday, Anandaya Judas, um, Eastern Body, Western Mind, uh, because everything is there in that, in that book that is just... Well, put any other book on the chakras to shame, except for maybe, you know, like Barbara Brennan's work and uh, Rajan Barrer's, um, there's Barbara, all of Barbara Brennan's work on the chakras, and then Rajan Barrer's at Wheels of, um, Wheels of Light, and uh, yeah, someone, I, I love the comment, someone brought in Wheels of Wheels of Life, Anandaya Judith did another book on Wheels of Life, Maybe maybe it had I, that one I don't have. It might have more. Uh, it might be more visual because the other the first book that I showed you yesterday it's not visual hardly at all. There aren't any um, color you know pictures. But if you get Barbara Brennan's um, uh, Hands of Light, ooh, there's a lot there. There's a lot of pictures there. A lot of beautiful artwork. So okay, that's all I have for today. Hope it wasn't too long, and hope you have a wonderful day. (laughs) Thank you. Bye.